It's finally here, and the price of Bitcoin is absolutely exploding. It's finally the week of the last deadline for the ARK21 shares ETF, and it looks like we're probably going to be getting all of these ETFs approved by Wednesday. At the time of recording, Bitcoin has exploded and it's at about $47,000, but as of yet, there isn't any actual confirmation of the news that the ETF has been approved, but the news might actually be released by the time you see this video. At the time of recording though, it looks like the price is the news, and us having broke above 47000 for just a few seconds earlier might be an indication that the ETF has already been approved, the news just hasn't been released yet. Even if it hasn't been approved just yet though, this is just a sign of what's to come whenever the news actually breaks, because the mainstream media is saying that it's imminent, that it's going to be approved, and it's probably going to happen by Wednesday. Crypto investors waiting with bated breath for approval of a Bitcoin ETF. Will it happen? And perhaps will it happen as soon as this week? Kate Rooney, that's the question. Hey, David, yeah, that is the question. A Bitcoin ETF, it's now widely expected to get the green light this week. Two sources close to the process now telling me it's looking like Wednesday, which is also the deadline for Kathy Wood's ARC and 21 shares bid. Then I'm told potential trading would happen Thursday or Friday, but it has been a moving target here on dates. The SEC is... Ex that might be one of the pieces of news that actually has been pushing us to the upside. A lot of people are expecting a bit of a sell-off after the news actually breaks, but if it starts trading within just a couple of days of the announcement, it could be a buy the rumor, buy the news event as money actually starts to flow into these ETFs sooner than we expected. Expected to approve rather a handful of applications at once. So sponsors filing even more paperwork this morning where we are starting to get a sense of this price war emerging. There are 13 applications out there with different free fees. Some are starting at zero and then rising once the fund hits a certain size. So BlackRock, for example, plans to start at 0.2% and then go to 0.3%, Fidelity at 0.39%. Grayscale looking like the highest here, 1.5%. This one's worth watching, guys. It's looking to convert an already publicly traded Bitcoin trust, GBTC. In, in my opinion, I would say that Grayscale is more of a sure bet than any of the others, only because the judge already said that it was arbitrary and capricious for the SEC to actually deny their trust to be converted into an ETF. However, BlackRock is obviously the fan favorite and everybody expects them to get their ETF approved, especially since they've got like a 99.9% .9 approval rating. And with them being the big boys on the block, everybody's expecting that the SEC is going to approve them first if they don't actually approve everybody at the same time. My question is, how serious is Grayscale with this 1.5% fee whenever BlackRock is trying to offer less than 1% fee? With fees like this, it looks like Grayscale is probably going to lose the ETF race, and BlackRock is probably going to scoop up the majority of investors. As this article on Coindesk says, with as many as 13 ETFs possibly set to list in the US in coming days, providers are seeking ways of differentiating themselves from other rivals and setting enticing fees is one of their main tools in doing so. It's not surprising to me that BlackRock would be offering the lowest fees because they probably have the most ability to do so. And hopefully soon we'll start to see cryptocurrency exchanges starting to adjust their fees so that they can compete with the likes of BlackRock and entice people to actually buy Bitcoin instead of buying a Bitcoin ETF. Another thing that could be pushing us up even if we haven't actually got this ETF approval actually announced yet is that a former SEC chair actually came out today and said that the ETF is inevitable and this could be a sign of the SEC leaking information or this ex-SEC chair speaking with his former colleagues about the likelihood of the eventual approval of these ETFs. Here's what he had to say. Bitcoin, are they going to, is the SEC going to sign off on a Bitcoin ETF? I think approval is inevitable. And, 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 Imminently? Uh, and, I, and I think it, that there's nothing left to decide. I know. And, and I, look, I credit the SEC for where they are. What, what has, what, where are we? We're comfortable with the disclosure. Joe just went through the cost of investing in a Bitcoin ETF. People need to know what the cost of doing it is. They need to know, you know, about the underlying Bitcoin market. Is the Bitcoin underlying trading market something that is, what I would say, is robust enough, efficacious enough, mm -hmm. where you can rely on it? it? It is much better today than it was five years ago. And finally, Gary Gensler released a thread on X saying some things to keep in mind if you're considering investing in crypto assets. 
a lot of people are speculating that this is him just trying to warn people because he knows that the ETF approvals are imminent so that if something goes wrong, he can at least say he warned everybody. He says those offering crypto assets or investment services may not be complying with applicable laws, including federal security laws. Investors in crypto asset securities should understand that they may be deprived of key info and other important protections in connection with their investment. Investments in crypto assets also can be exceptionally risky and are often volatile. A number of major platforms and crypto assets have become insolvent and or lost their value. Investments in crypto assets continue to be subject to significant risk. He's not wrong here and it's definitely subject to significant risk. We have seen a lot of volatility and a lot of companies have gone under. But all new technologies like this are very volatile whenever they're new and it's just a part of the growing pains as we reach mainstream adoption. Unfortunately, businesses also go under all the time in traditional markets. And if you're investing in something, then you just have to know that your money might disappear because that's just the nature of investments in general. An investment isn't a loan that you're giving somebody and there's not really an expectation of you getting money back necessarily. It's more of a gamble that you're actually expecting the company to grow in the future. But if it doesn't, then you can absolutely lose money and people do all the time. But if you learn how to read the markets and you actually pay attention to cryptocurrency technology, then this volatility can represent a really great opportunity to make life-changing wealth. And in the crypto space, a lot of crypto bros say that it's a feature and not a bug, and it's actually what attracts a lot of us to the space in the first place. He goes on to say that fraudsters continue to exploit rising popularity of crypto assets and lure retail investors into scams. These investments continue to be replete with fraud, and bogus coin offerings, Ponzi and pyramid schemes, and outright theft where a project promoter disappears with investors' money. Again, this kind of thing also happens in the traditional market, and there's going to be scammers anywhere that there's money to be made. But cryptocurrency offers the only escape from the traditional finance system, and to a lot of people, it's worth the risk. I've seen a lot of new people in the comments, and I just wanted to tell you guys thank you so much for watching and for being part of this channel. I'm really glad that you guys have chosen me to get your crypto news. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button because I'm going to be keeping you guys updated with all the cryptocurrency news every day, Monday through Friday. And I'll try to post my videos before 5 p.m. Eastern time. Let me know in the comments where all of you guys are from. And most importantly, don't forget to have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.